Hi guys, and welcome to the Scottish Silverback podcast, and uh, this is episode 31. And uh, this week we've got our first female guest um, with uh, IFBB Pro, Erin Thompson, or Erin thompson Watt. I've had this discussion before, but whatever. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, Erin, uh, what we want to do usually with our guests is kind of just like introduce yourself. Um, obviously, having a, obviously, most of your followers and that will be like female and that. So, and Greg and I, I'm sure, are like 98% male on like Instagram and stuff like that. So if you just want to introduce yourself, tell us a bit about yourself, um, how you got into bodybuilding, all the usual palaver. <laughs> so I am an online coach in professional bodybuilding. I started bodybuilding in 2017. I actually competed in the bikini category. So I competed in bikini in my first year and then transitioned it to figure where I won my pro card in my second figure figure competition over, over in Italy. Then I spent a period of time in a long improvement season and then competed last year in my pro debut over in the Bahamas and then headed over to Orlando there. However, I realized that the girls are like triple the size of me. <laughs> so I'm taking a long improvement season just now. I just got married a couple of months ago. So I did do a little diet for that because I didn't want to look yeah. like a, <laughs> a butch bride. <laughs> so we're heading back into my improvement season just now. And then we're looking to probably compete around like July sort of time next year. And yeah, I'm an online coach, just like the majority of... <laughs> so of so cliche, it? Yeah. You <laughs> can say that, though, but you have probably been one of the most popular female coaches, I would say, in Britain now. Do you think so? I'd honestly say so. If I hear anybody's real females being coached by, it's usually you. Oh, I love so, that. So Education I've seen over the last two years how much you've actually developed yourself from obviously becoming an IPU pro to one of the top, well, one of the most popular coaches, I would say, in the UK just now. Yeah. You want to ask the other day to do the coaching corner or something? Yeah, the coaching convention. That's it. So, yeah, that's going to be awesome. I think it's just going to be mainly speaking about, like, how we've actually built our businesses more than anything and just kind of giving, a, 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 like, a background as to, to how we've got to, to where we, we are. But... My main focus on ethos is like safer drug use, providing females with education and actually giving them an understanding as to why we're doing the things that we are, because there is a lot of shit coaches out there that do basically just provide a plan and just say to fucking deal with it, basically. Yeah. So I'm trying to take that away. Yeah. Obviously, that's been asked to do that, asked to say something about. Where, like where you are just now it's not that we just ask anybody do I mean you ask who does go there they're pretty top name coaches so obviously to be asked is quite an honour thank you <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so um, yeah so you say that you started in the bikini category did you feel that like did you force your physique to push up to figure or was it kind of like just a kind of like it just kind of happened really like you kind of noticed that you know I'll say Greg wanted to do classic at one point and I told him to fuck off. And um because it's like some people just grow, just grow, just grow uh, so easily. Um so was that kind of like the situation for yourself? It's kind of like you just added size and then eventually just find yourself in figure. So when I started, I didn't have a clue about each of the, the different divisions. Mm -hmm. I actually had a coach that was basically a girl that was on my personal training course. And she was like, Oh, you should do do a competition. So she was like, you can't enter bikini, but you can enter bikini chain. So I entered PC, PC. So they've got two like sub sub categories basically. So I was on the more muscular side anyway, but I do not have the structure for bikini. I'm not naturally built with <laughs> huge cleats. <laughs> so the fact that I won the overall in my first year competing, I was like, well, where, where do I go next? Because at that time, there wasn't really offering PCA Pro cards. So my, because I've got like a very, very competitive background and I always want to make sure that I'm progressing the best I possibly can. When I actually analysed my physique and put myself into figure poses, I found that I actually suited them 
so so much better i would yeah. say that i did grow tissue quite quickly i think my physique's changed rapidly since my first season um but i'm obviously nowhere near the standard as to what the girls are 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 nowadays mm -hmm. they, 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 just like every other class it's just evolving so much that it's like how how far is it actually going to go? But I think my structure yeah. lies in uh, lies in figure definitely. Yeah, I know you've had a few things to say about that um, in terms of like where the, the figure category is going. Um, I mean, like you talk about kind of the girls kind of coming in like too big in that, um, but do you think that's a systemic thing across the board? Like, do you think that's just like it will it will never stop going up, or do you think they'll come back down? Because we noticed between in male in open bodybuilding, you noticed that kind of there was a, a different trend when when Roden came in, and then Curry. You were like, "Oh, right, maybe this is going a different way." Not that they're small, but um, and then obviously kind of Rami kind of turned the tide with that a wee bit. But um, I mean, from what I've seen in figure, um, having coached Karen Gibson, um, like it was, you saw some of the pro level. You're like, "What the fuck?" Like. Back in the day, that top, those top level pro girls, that that would have been bodybuilding. Yeah, like it's, 15, it, it, 15 years yeah. ago. Yeah, it's so. crazy. The the pro, like, don't get me wrong, it's incredible the way that mm -hmm. it's going. Like, hats off to everybody that actually takes their physique to that place. However, I think it is that the the class is completely taken away from what what it actually is, which is symmetry, balance. But femininity mm -hmm. as well. There is other classes above that that does require, obviously, more density and muscle mass. But the way that figure, the what I've seen for this like the this season so far is that they are the girls are huge, and mm -hmm. a lot of the girls that are placing have got a lot thicker like waists as well. And even then, I think it really depends on what they do go for with like second third fourth fifth at the olympia this year because sydney the miss figure olympia that she's been like the past four consecutive years she is petite i think yeah. her state weight is actually like 65 kilos she's just very very dense yeah, yeah. But yeah. in the very like crazy. smaller pro shows that's where like bigger physiques are are being awarded so yeah. it's really quite confusing if, if i'm yeah. being honest yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, they brought in, years ago, they brought in, obviously, physique so that they could bend bodybuilding and move away from that look. And then, obviously, they've brought bodybuilding back for a few shows now. So, like, you can just see the that kind of trend of just kind of constantly moving just that way. I mean, what will, like, bikini become one day? Do we then have, like, a swimsuit category that's even below that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, where, where we go from here and then. That's I'm sh I'm sure like you can obviously talk more about this than, than me and Greg can, but because we've coached a, a few girls in that, but sometimes the judging criteria this applies to all federations. You're just like I fucking have no idea like bikini, bikinis 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 the worst. However, yeah. the girls that are being rewarded for bikini now are basically just like tiny little figure girls. They're coming yeah. into to condition yeah. with striated glutes and. Like feathers yeah. in their quads, and it's ridiculous because that's I not what bikini is. Week, Andy, I said to you, I showed you a photo of you girls. I can't believe that is um, bikini now. Like absolutely mm. striated quads, everything's like feathered out. It's it's insane. And I was like, that's not bikini to me. Yeah. But then it seems like every federation has got their different cri criteria. And I can obviously it does change about a little bit, but sometimes the differences is quite dramatic. From federation to federation i think that's quite wrong as well if you look at pca bikini yeah. and npc bikini they're two completely yeah. different yeah. looks yeah. the the pca girls are huge this season and they mm -hmm. are they are rewarding obviously conditioning on on size like yeah. even in the first timer shows it's crazy the the how dense these girls are coming in and it yeah, just yeah. makes you think, like, when are they going to not reward that and actually go back to, 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 yeah. to what the, the class actually is? Yeah. I think it's just, like, going back to, like, to what we just spoke about. Like, when you get to that pro level, you're obviously class yourself as a, as a pro. And, like, to obviously 
get up to that upper level, that you're going to have to take a big step from the amateur level. It's not just going to be like walking into fucking pro, pro shows and doing well. Very, very rare that will happen. So it is a big jump to kind of get up in the levels of going into a pro. But it's now getting to a point where it's like everybody's still trying to give another inch every year, getting bigger, getting better. And it's like, that's just going to keep going until somebody says, right, we're going to have to cut it back. That's why I think, in my opinion, obviously, trying to get, like, when you, you were saying there, about your, yeah, your category, the size of some of them now is just, they went way past the criteria of what it even was, like, two years ago. Yeah. Way too much. And even then, it's just because, like, females are actually pushing more drugs now than, yeah. Than, yeah. than ever. And I compete because I love the process. Uh, and as long as I'm getting better every single time that I step on stage, there's I am not going to the extremities that some of these girls are doing to yeah. gain, gain, gain muscle, like, unfortunately. I'll just, just that drive to win. Yeah. You've got that, well, we'll all have that, like, want to win, like, really, really bad. But some of them will have, like, they'll go to any level. They don't really care about sometimes their complexion, their femininity. They're like, I want to win. And they will take, like, excessive drugs to obviously get there. But many people can say, no, I'm not that, I'm not wanting to do that. I think for females especially, like it's temper, like we body, it's a very, very short period of our t life in the grand scheme of things. Unless yeah, you're yeah. not wanting children or like you don't care about the way you look or sound. But like I'm only going to be bodybuilding until I'm maybe like 30, 35, maybe. Maybe not 30, probably 35. <laughs> 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 oh, then I'll be 40. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, femininity, I, 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 something that I, I want to keep. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I want my voice to change oh, or to yeah. have, have to shave my beard every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, yeah. we have spoken about this before as well. We know, as obviously open bodybuilders, like how hard sometimes we have to push the envelope. To be where we want to be like obviously when we obviously do win our pro cars like we know to go to the next level of pros it's 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 no fucking walk in the park we're gonna to have to be bigger and better and we, we've not exactly been taking it easy up until now so we know that the next level could be even harder and it's like how much harder can we push to get to that it's like sometimes you're just not gifted to be that size or win those kind of pro shows or whatever but the envelope will have to push one day when it comes yeah. definitely I mean, I think like with um, with the female categories, I think if you, obviously if you love the process and you, you love training, you love competing, I think like play your own game, play your own game because you don't know what like um, what like who you can be up against one day. You might be up in a, in a yeah. class where or in front of judges that don't like the overly drugged up look, they don't like the you know like conditioned out your fucking mind and bigger than the fucking than Greg Lars. Like, you know, you just want you just want like what it originally should be. <laughs> exactly. Right, it took, took a wee while that one. <laughs> Love and, that. Uh, and uh I right, so like you might be in front of those kind of judges so that's that's why I play your own game. Like so obviously you need to fit within the criteria but play your own game within that criteria. Um I think that's kind of what a lot of girls should be hearing really and I'm not sure I know you punt that kind of as well so yeah like I I, I know that I've got to gain a lot of muscle but mm. it's a rate that I feel comfortable with and as, yeah, well, as yeah. long as I'm doing everything I possibly can from like a training perspective and making sure that I'm consistent with food sleep and obviously being safe with drug use as well I know that that additional muscle is going to is going to come but it's maybe not going to come in a six month period. Right. End of the day, we know by looking at people on stage, like if that was well put on muscle or was that a lot of drugs got put into that? Like you can see by like clean, like those clean lines, the, the quality of the muscle, the conditioning, yeah. that's like been taking time. It's like been taking a long time to put on, it's been small increments putting on. It's not just like give me shit tons of drugs, I'll fucking put it on my frame. Yeah. Because you can see that from a mile away. And at the end of the day, that's going to be rewarded for putting it on slowly and putting it on better. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So in terms of your training, just we'll step away from the, the whole, because I, I feel like sometimes me and Greg get on a wee kind of like a negative 
sidetracked, but we just end up bitching about people and fucking all the parts <laughs> and saying that. So we'll, we'll take a trip back. Um, in terms of your training, like how do you set up your training? Because um, we know that, you know, across each category, like there is sometimes a, a difference in the way girls train. So kind of what's your kind of like your ethos and your training style? And I know you're obviously coached by Callum, but obviously you'll still have your own thoughts and opinions on training. So. So in regard, are you asking what my split is or how I set up my training? All the above. <laughs> okay. Um, in my training has changed significantly probably in the past like three weeks because prior to the wedding, I was doing, what was it? Four sessions with, with back in a week, which is well, my, my recovery was fucked basically however I do think I've actually seen quite a significant difference in my in my back due to the obviously increasing increasing the volume but now that I've obviously dieted down and I've seen what I'm actually working with I do need to significantly work on my legs so at the moment I'm, I'm training glutes um well like a posterior day back push and then I'm now doing doing legs with with Greg as well, which is good. But past couple of months as well, Greg's been like the thing is I'm really really open to changing things from a training perspective. Like yeah. I'm not one of these. Although there is obviously like scientific ways for progressive overload, I am a huge believer in like anecdotal data is really important as well, and actually trialing things yourself. And I've yeah. actually really, really enjoyed doing like rest pause sets, drop sets, um, and more higher volume accumulating like sets that is going to increase fatigue. Yeah. But mm-hmm. like the majority of us, like training the failure, this is the most important thing. And training mm-hmm. fucking hard is mm-hmm. the most important thing. And that mm-hmm. does mean going to like true failure as opposed to just mechanical failure. Because a lot yeah. of people do just stop when the reps start to break down. However, in my opinion, it's those little reps that you do after is going to help from a progression perspective. Yeah. Oh, yeah so. so it's cool. like my training has start, started to shift more towards that as opposed to just going to mechanical mechanical failure as well. Yeah. So, yeah. And I feel so much better in my recovery not doing, like training that way, but not doing as much volume throughout the throughout the week yeah because i was yeah. just fucked constantly <laughs> so yeah. i'm glad that it's definitely changed up for the better <laughs> yeah it's still it's so hard sometimes when you're like peak level of where you've never been before like to recover from session to session is it's tough every yeah. session should be demanding so trying to recover for that is obviously going to be very challenging yeah, yeah. No, cool. um, <laughs> Obviously, you you coach a lot of a lot of people in that, and um, so how do you how do you find like me and Greg kind of moan all the time to each other privately um, about not privately, but uh, how being at your level, right? Because you're you're a professional physique athlete, right? How do you find coaching people who are either maybe lifestyle or just take this a wee bit more serious or even compete? How do you deal with people who you know like, are falling off their diet all the time? Do you, do you, do you, do you struggle with staff now? She gives it to them. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Luckily, I'm, I'm in a good position now that I yeah. gave Martina and Georgia all of the all of the the lifestyle. All the shite. <laughs> I remember, I one thing that I did do when I did coach lifestyle competitors was create like a content library where it was just videos of me speaking through progressive overload. Actually videos of me training so they actually know how far they've got to to take their sets. Yeah. Getting them to send me over like videos so I can analyze their training and um, providing them with obviously feed, feedback and just being transparent, like actually telling them that if they want to do this then they're going to have to have to obviously put in put in the work yeah what I was, what I was kind of getting at though was like 
trying to put yourself in someone's shoes who's not as like dedicated and disciplined as yourself like how did you how did you well with your competitors then how did you deal with people how do you deal with people who want to obviously stand on stage but you know they have, they have slips here and there then they don't adhere to certain things how do you deal with that because each coach has obviously a different way of dealing with that um from from like my own experience it took me a long time to like understand that people are n- not always going to be as dedicated yeah as me yeah that makes sense you know what i mean so but it, but it is just it's understanding that and breaking their goal goals down into like micro phases mm-hmm. so their main goal is to step on stage or to to lose 10 pounds however if they do just think of that goal it's they're going to feel very very overwhelmed and feel more likely to to quit during that process because it's so far away so if you break the goal down into like one pound or focusing on the like first like couple weeks of their training and like actually like reverse engineer backwards so you've got the goal in place for like the, their, their, their macro goal and then kind of work backwards yeah. that way that mm-hmm. is what has really really helped with with my girls so they can actually see on their check-in sheet okay we're still in phase one we're, we're just a couple of weeks from phase two where i need to do this this week this is my like my goal and it just yeah. kind of makes it more easier for them to adhere to but every single client of mine is like totally di- totally different because everybody's yeah. lifestyles is totally different as well like yeah. manipulating their macros so they're not on the same meal plan seven days a week is is beneficial. So they've got more wiggle room at, at weekends or like on days where they're like traveling for work, etc. is something that mm-hmm. I find really, really useful. And like, mm-hmm. again, like some of my clients macro track, some are on meal plans. It is just, it really just depends on the client and actually working yeah. with that individual to find the best approach for them yeah yeah so you were in um in tennessee with with your the two clients there how was that oh it was amazing well it it was good to see them however it was mental because of the time difference like i had like no sleep the whole Mm -hmm. the whole time i was away how long were you there um i was there (laughs) i think it was like four four days four total days right it it took like 12 hours or something four four days to actually get there like (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but it was good it was definitely definitely worth it but like it's just difficult when you've got cl- clients competing in the UK that you're yeah. having to get up at like 2 a.m to do client check-ins because they can't wait until like yeah. 12 1 o'clock when I get up for a response yeah to reverse part one or- o'clock oh yeah I was setting alarms to oh to no I thought, you the, I thought you meant in the afternoon Oh no, yeah. So oh, it right. would be like right. it would be like one o'clock in the UK time. Yeah. Where uh, it would be like six o'clock in America. Yeah. So we're having to set alarms in the middle of the night to right. get up and do work. To go I was like, if you get, I was like, of course they're fucking pissed off if you get at one p.m. You know what I mean, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now to reverse back there, you were saying obviously you've got Martina working with you. You've also got the is it FemFit? Yes. You want to explain that? So FemFit's like a educational porter where we provide like evidence and anecdotal data on like just general health and fitness. But now we're going more into like the contest prep side as well, like giving girls an understanding as to what lipolytics are, different pathways you can take, like how long you should stay in a contest prep for, like how to handle like a reverse diet what is a reverse diet so it's just providing like a a platform that females can go to at a low cost and find out information as opposed to just googling googling it because google's a minefield (laughs) and there's sometimes if you type in like a reverse diet some of the stories that come up (laughs) is is ridiculous same with if you type in like female drug use especially like Oh yeah. They, they, if you go on Reddit, some of the <laughs> yeah, I've seen some, some of the forums on there are crazy. <laughs> so what's a monthly subscription? Yeah, it's just like a a monthly subscription site where females can 
can join and watch videos. So it's more like for the contest prep, it's more like preparing people for like what to expect more than actually like telling them how to do it themselves. Oh yeah. 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 So like basically telling them like what they need for show day, what kind of shoes to get. How, How do you decide mistakes? what kind kind of earrings you should go for? Because these are all questions that you get asked. <laughs> you guys probably get asked it as well. <laughs> do you know what colour of bikini I should get? <laughs> Greg, Greg asked me that all the time. Well, I've got a pair of pants to get. Yep. Just send your fours. Send your fours. Just look good on my bum. <laughs> black always. Black always. always. Yeah. Always black. Uh, I should have a question now. Fuck. One. No, I did. Ah, you got the question. So no. uh, what well, I've, I've asked a few of them already. Um, in terms of you, you mentioned your background there, you said like obviously you're super competitive. Now, what is what was your background prior to training and bodybuilding? I was a competitive dancer, so I did Highland dancing. So I competed right. at like the World Championships. I competed in in Canada and I competed in Denver, Colorado for dancing. And then Ooh. I was Ooh. a competitive swimmer as well. So backstroke and butterfly was my stroke. So it probably explains why I've got half decent, <laughs> half decent delts. But <laughs> since like the age of four, I was I've been brought up to get up first thing in the morning to swim every morning mm. before going to school, to come home, mm. to then go to dancing class and then swim later in the yeah. evening after that so i've had like a right like a, a regimented background since, yeah, since yeah. growing up and then i had a bad skiing accident where i tore my acl and broke my collarbone and then i, I there's no way i could go back to the level that i was competing at so that's when i started the gym and then just obviously became addicted to that <laughs> yeah have you always done pt I actually started as a mechanical engineer. <laughs> mm. I, I did mechanical engineering before I became a PT. So I became a PT in 2015. Okay. But did mechanical engineering before that. Hated it. Did you do it like it. online before competing? Pardon? Did you do online coaching before you started like competing in the shows? I think I had one online client. Okay. Yeah, one online client. And then when you won, it just started booming. I think, yeah, I think, I think, I think that's how it, it happens with everybody though, does it? Like yeah. once you do like a couple of shows, that's when you start picking up people mm. from, from different countries and different places. Yeah. But I think like, even like documenting my journey on like YouTube, etc., was probably a big, big factor that, kind of gave me exposure to get more online mm -hmm. clients, I think. Do you think you could be where you are now without the accomplishments you've done competing? Probably, because I'm stubborn so. and I'm hard, hard working. And if I put my mind to something, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Because like me and Andy spoke as well, like obviously we know, I'm not gonna name names, but there is people obviously who have not like achieved anything like on stage wise and they seem to do quite well like in clients and we're always wondering, like how the fuck do they advertise how do they know because they've never really done it they're walk to walk and it's, like, I, th I think being. actually being yourself on social media is a big thing like mm -hmm. you need to get on your story and speak more greg yeah and just be show your personality because people buy into people more than anything people see you behind the screen talking They'll want to work with you. That's my opinion. I'm not a business guru, so I'm not. <laughs> so <laughs> that's definitely the, the the new thing now. People doing business mentorships and coaching. Yeah, definitely. It's gonna be a new thing that takes off next year. People have never done it before. Yeah. Eh, <laughs> yeah. uh, was fuck. I completely forgot my question again. <laughs> Horrendous hoofs. <laughs> Do you have questions like on your phone? I've read them all out. So I've, I've broken them down because like a lot of them are quite the same, like to do with the background and stuff. What's been your uh, favourite show that you've competed in? My favourite show would have probably been Italy, where I won my pro card, oh, yeah. because it was really, really well run, and we was on first thing in the morning as well. 
There's no fucking about waiting for right. like finals. Like the Bahamas, like the Puerto Rico Pro was ridiculous because pre judging was the day before. And you had finals, finals the day after. So, like, trying to hold your physique for two yeah. days was really, really tricky. Yeah. How expensive was that trip? Pardon? How expensive was the Bahamas trip? A fortune. <laughs> Don't want to speak about it. <laughs> that it, it, were, it was really, really, really expensive because when I was over in the Bahamas, I was staying... I was staying myself for a little bit in like a little like shock basically and I was terrified so I was like nah I need to go stay in the host, host hotel so I had to pay more money to to stay in the the Grand Hyatt or whatever it was <laughs> because I was like I do not need this stress on show day. Right. I just couldn't believe the price of some of the food I was honestly I was like fuck ever competing there. Like one oh. bit of salmon like like 200 grams of salmon was like twenty five pounds. <coughs> I, I I was spending a hundred pounds a day on food. That's fucking. Oh, what did they get paid over there? I know. Sure. It was just the meat and everything that was really really expensive. But even then, yeah. a bag of green beans was like nine dollars. <laughs> you say something else there. <laughs> a bag of green know. beans. <laughs> 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 it was a stressful trip. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I was shocked about was actually how good the gym was. Oh, the, the gym, the gym was, was yeah, gym, gym was amazing. It was all like Arsenal kit. A lot of the stuff was pretty shit though, but mm. it was like it was well equipped, which, which mm. was good, which I was yeah, really, I really surprised at. But yeah. Orlando was obviously a lot better because it's in America and the food over there is amazing. Far better. Oh, I. <laughs> I had an amazing time. I it. I do it so much better, don't they? I. I ate my way around Orlando the day after. <laughs> Moved around forgiven. Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> I think I just have like a suitcase home for all the stuff you get at the supermarket. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did. did totally. Yeah. When, I the, when I done when I done Arnold, that's people weren't messaging me like good luck. They're like, Can you pick up this this yeah. day? <laughs> like, You're not fucking prick, mate. You haven't told me the whole prep and now you want fucking MMs. <laughs> I know. I know, uh, no, it was amazing. But I'm going to definitely do Europe next year because like compete in Europe. Just because I want to see what I actually do stand up against the yeah. uh, European girls. Yeah, it's a different look. Whatever you, I mean, it's not a different look, but it's like almost the judges kind of look for someone a little bit different. Like when I was speaking to Carl the other day, he was like, "I think the judges would be favoured towards you in Europe, where they like freaky body parts. They really like that on the stage." So he's like, "You'll probably be better suited going there." So I was like, "All right, okay, so we'll do that." But yeah, I, yeah it's just I think all the judges look for a little bit different where you are in the world. But yeah, interesting. You decided which one you want to do. I'm definitely going to be doing Portugal because I, I, I need to be on that stage. The stage is amazing. Yeah, the it's like, class, isn't it? yeah, it's amazing. So definitely Portugal. Oh, I want to spun. Spain, yeah. Yeah, spun man, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Portugal and Spain's probably going to be the going to be the main ones. But yeah. we'll see. I just, I just think the, the, now. Spain, the Spain one, the the lights, the background, everything looks just amazing. It's like a massive disco. Yeah. Like a, just like a cool atmosphere. Yeah. You've got the screen behind you as well. You can see yourself when you're posing. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I just yeah. went to the back of his early 20s. On stage. Well, I beat compete. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very different competition. I beat the classic. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be doing the Ibiza classic next week. And I cannot wait. <laughs> What's up? What's up? You're going for a relaxing holiday. Yeah, we, we are going. I know. Uh, we are going to Ibiza next week. This is going to be the first holiday since I actually started competing, which is mental. Oh, really? Fuck. Yeah, I've been, I've been on holiday, but I've always been on prep or by myself. And right. then, like being in a different country yourself is not the same, is it? Mm -hmm. Like I can easily go to restaurants myself, but. It's not the it's not the same experience. So no. this is the first time that we're going on holiday and I can just eat whatever I want. Everything. Yes. Uh, 
I was going to say, so you mentioned that obviously you grew up doing country dancing, so obviously you can dance. Well, does that does that kind of um, what's the word? Does that actually mean you can dance dance like any kind of dancing, or can you only country dance? You know, know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I can dance. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So when that, that leads to my next question, right? Is have you ever thought about doing fitness? Or is that too gymnastic? -y? This is actually something that I have actually thought of because I am actually quite flexible. Mm -hmm. However, I would need to learn how to backflip and how to, how to do all that because yeah. that's the thing. Like, if I did that class, I would want to make sure that I was actually yeah. putting on a show more than anything. I think you could do it while, like, one week, two weeks out with zero energy. And, like, that's your routine. That's oh, what I how they do that, honestly. See, you know, like, so much energy that I do fucking cartwheels, backflips. Jumping about, I'm like, no, nah, no way. I know. He's it's dead. I, I, hats off to them though. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It's cool to watch. Would, like, yeah, I would love to be able to do like a butt flip or like a. See when they just do that, like flips down the whole stage. Yeah. So impressive. Yeah. Maybe this box, impressive. Zero energy, it's mental. It's effortless. I know. Yeah. We what we saw the of the Arnold Pro fitness. And that was that was phenomenal. That was so good. That was really, really good. So no, I was just wondering there because obviously you mentioned the dancing. And I was like, oh, but actually, you know, wonder why you I haven't know. done that. But but yeah. even then, the girls that are winning the pro the pro shows, they're either like they've grown up being like cheerleaders, yeah, or the are the are gymnasts. Like although dancing right. is obviously a skill in it, I think you do need to have that. That that gymnastic aspect. Is uh, you can't just do like a fitness routine where you just like shuffle it. No. So, yeah. <laughs> just if jump in. Your background, if your background is translated over, like to be able to pose quite well, like the flow and just transitions and that. Do you think it's translated over? Have you seen my posing from when I started? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was shocking. Shocking. However, yeah, I, I do. It, it has definitely allowed. I, it has definitely helped with like the fluidity yeah. and the confidence. Pose is like, not the same. Like when you first you first do, nobody's going to be amazing. It takes time to learn the poses, but like we all know, like if you can, you have rhythm, tra like yeah. transitions and a routine is obviously going to be a hell of a lot easier. Yeah, the coordination as yeah. well helps. Yeah. You do a lot of posing clients as well. Do you not get like frustrated when like they have absolutely zero fucking coordination or yes. rhythm? Game? It's so <laughs> all the time, and that's why we particularly like doing posing because it's so frustrating. You show somebody like five times something, and they'll do the same thing wrong five times again. It's like what the fuck? Yeah, I just showed you. I know it's it trying to get terminologies that will actually like stick yeah. in their head as well. Yeah. It's easy telling somebody to spread their lats, but like for somebody that's never done that before, it's actually really, really difficult. It's alien. They've no idea what you're what you're doing. But then yeah. I always say, if you can do that, you can transfer it over to movements as well. Trying to feel a movement better. If you can pose it, then that muscle movement is going to be you connecting it better and like say a roar. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. I like the one. Hard to start. I like the one where it's, uh, it's like right. Do a front relax. So they're like, okay, cool. So. Like, you stand like that. I was like, okay, cool. And uh, just pretend you're riding a bike. No, yeah. The, <laughs> the fuck bike is that? I, I, always, I always say that. I go, mate, what kind of bike is that? I know. A chopper. A, a bike. <laughs> <laughs> Shit like that, honestly. And it's like, turn from the side, side, relax. So put your arm down. As soon as you go back to the side, like that, put your arm yeah. down. Uh, I know. Every, every put time. your arm down. I know. Uh, like, but when you get someone who can pose, it's like, oh, thank God. Like, yeah. and then you obviously just tweak and manipulate. But like, you get some people where like, how did you walk in a straight line into this gym when you can't even <laughs> fucking stand still like that? Like, how's how's that possible? <laughs> I know. I've a few people by the end of the session. I got so frustrated. I'm just like, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> just like, just <laughs> trying to do it because I thought the middle head. I'm like, you're not learning. Get the fuck out. I know, like after like five or six times of repeating the same thing, you do just sit totally in silent and just be like, got, yeah. Yeah, I'm I've got to be really wary of my tone because I'm like that. I'm like, all right, quarter turn to the right, <laughs> fucking right, front double in, fuck's sake, whatever. I'm like, oh fuck. 
pure talent or shite. <laughs> Throw it on your phone. Yeah, I know, uh, fantastic. <laughs> make him, yeah. uh, it's really bad, but you make him do a back pose and you're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the front. Oh, it's so bad sometimes. I've had some bad so ones. Bad. Oh, same. It is same. good when you get a good person in pose and it's just so much easier, but trying to even, like, like you said, manipulate them, they'll just straight away, they'll learn it and the, the next time they hit it, straight away, they'll learn it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Pose is definitely the hardest things to teach. I've got a question for you as well, right? So, you're a broker, aren't you? Yes. Right, so why, don't, why, don't, <laughs> why don't you sign that one? Because oh, you do you tone it down? I travelled up and down the country basically every single weekend. When if I younger. spit like ass, <laughs> maybe you don't understand me. Yeah, yeah. So, so I was wondering, I was like, is she, is she going to come on the podcast and like, Speak, speak Brock. No, I was like, no, nah, I don't think she will. I don't think she will. Pardon? I was say, can you get fucking subtitles on Zoom? I know. <laughs> I, no, I'm just learned. Yeah. You, we you, had, do, uh, we had, you do come out of it sometimes. Yeah. Like when you're speaking, like your tone gets a bit louder, it just comes out. <laughs> it's like it just continues. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I sometimes it's say so hard nee. to hide it all the time. Yeah, I sometimes a... say nay nee instead of no. Oh, uh, yeah, I, but I need to for do you in like my video check ins. If I spoke in Brock, nobody would understand me, especially when I'm working with Americans as well. Like, Americans <laughs> struggle, I struggle to, <laughs> to understand me just now. Never yeah. mind speaking in Brock. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, for you people who. Quite heavily. Oh, yeah. Pardon? You used to speak it like quite heavily before you tried to calm it down. Like oh, yeah. Granny, speak it heavily. Like Windy. Oh, no, I did say, yeah, I know. Granny, I granny. My granny. Because uh, Reagan, oh, Reagan's from uh, Kirkcaldy, and sometimes when she's on the phone, like, I'm like, oh, fuck. What's coming in your mouth? I'm just like, Kirkcaldy. <laughs> it's, like, it's so funny, man. Well, I've never heard you speak Brock, so I always wondered, like, you know, I mean, if if you do actually speak Brock, or you just tone it down for everyone so they can understand you. <laughs> no, definitely tone it down. Definitely. You not notice people from there are so. <laughs> there we go. The words. What's the word? Uh, they're like, I don't know the fucking word. It's like they're actually really proud to speak like that. Because they even write in text message like that. Oh, yeah. And they're so proud to speak like that. They have to write in text message too. I like, What the fuck? Why do you speak normal? I my mom's like that. It's like your language. You speak that, but you can write normal. Yeah, my mom's like that. Yeah. <laughs> She's, she'll like say, like, speak and Atha and love you. We like, are you, are you instead of I know? <laughs> The only thing that for me is like if on the predictive text you're for me like what the fuck are you writing? Uh, you need to fight the predictive text. So like what you're like, like an X every single time you wrote a word because that's not the word you're trying to write. <laughs> I was just doing my nothing. Yeah, my mate James is from from Brock and I was like, mate, just phone me. Fuck's sake. Like what? <laughs> just phone me. I'm sick of this. Fuck's sake. So yeah. it's funny, like <clears throat> but when I'm going to ask some really boring questions now. So where do you see yourself in the next... I know you said like you kind of got your, your age cap or where you want to be, but where do you see yourself in the next, let's say, three to five, three to five years? Such a hard question. Such a hard question. I don't what is, know, what's, your, what's your goals for like your shows coming up? Like Obviously, when you went to America, you wanted to place inside the top 10, didn't you? I think we were in top 12. Yeah, so what your your bigger ambitions for these European shows. Yeah. So I want to become I want to get into top call outs. Top three, definitely. Yeah. But even then it's just so hard to say because I don't know where I'm going. Like I'm so competitive. I want to be in that that top three. I want to say that I want to to win, but I don't it, like with the way that the, the everything's going, I don't know if that would ever be possible. And I came to that like realization like a couple of months ago mm. and like realized that, that my goals and like aspirations might not ever become a reality because it's changed 
so much, which yeah. is which is hard. I think it'll go back, but I've also said this to you before. It's like you need to realize, like you've not been in the game that long. Yeah. How long you still have? That's it's a hundred percent achievable. You're just looking at like the now and then more yeah. than like where you could be. Yeah. No, obviously that's not what I mean. We all do that. We all, we all look at ourselves now and think, "Fuck me, I want to look like this." And it's like I've still got time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you realize the potential in the future, not the now. Yeah. Yeah. You just need to get massive. Yeah. Where do you get feel, massive. What's been like the hardest body part you feel to bring up for you? Mm, my glutes. Yeah. Definitely glutes, but even then, probably. Because I've been focusing so much on other areas, on my calves, obviously. So I've only, I only started training calves last week. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my quads feel like they're suffering a little bit because everything else has grown so much. My quads it used to be my strongest point, and I feel they're just kind of hide away, hiding away in the background now. So mm -hmm. it's a priority to get them bigger and denser yeah. this next couple of years. Fingers yeah. crossed they do. Yeah. Who would you say you kind of look up to the most in, in figure? I'm just throwing cliche questions at you now. Mm, I love Samantha Jaren mm. because oh, yeah. she paints hard. She's feminine. She's got a phenomenal physique. And like, yeah, she's a businesswoman, she's hardly, yeah, like, she's so driven, like, probably, probably her, that's probably, like, one of my yeah. best, like, aspirations, if it was, like, anybody, to be honest. Did you meet her when you were across the Gasp? Pardon? See, when you were across America, did you not hook up with the Gasp people? No, that was Liv Roth. That was Hunter Labrada's girlfriend, yeah. or fiance. Okay. I thought I thought when you were across America, you hooked up with some of the gas people and you met her. No, no I, w I wish I did meet up with her. <laughs> I would love to see what she looks like in real life because you only see what like she posts on social media. So it would be interesting to see how much bigger she actually is in person. I think yeah. she um, rose to winning quite quick, didn't she? Yeah. I think she was training hell of a long before she went into Spain, won the amateur, and won the pro show the same day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I, I think I watched one of her YouTubes. I don't think she was actually she was training like two years or something. Yeah. That blew me away. Yeah, she looks unreal. Yeah. So, yeah, she's probably good. her. Yeah, she's good. You're good pals with uh, Ria, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Uh, and she's yeah. a, a phenom as well. Like, she's just like, I always, I, I could honestly confuse her with the Miss, Miss Olympia figure. Yeah, Ria's unbelievable. Her physique is outstanding. Like, her muscle bellies are just... Crazy. Crazy. She's so, so dense. But even then, like, she's not huge. Like, she's really, she's, like, compact. Yeah. Like, she really, like, suits. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, she's got a lovely, lovely shape. I'll be excited to see how she does. How she yeah, does yeah. She just yeah, needs really to good. believe in herself more. Yeah. Definitely. She's very aesthetically gifted. Yeah, definitely. I don't want to use the term. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know what you mean, though. <laughs> definitely. All, all of a sudden, you want to stop using that term. I need to stop using it. <laughs> the lucky ones. Yeah, it's called lucky ones then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back to it again. Oh, fucking hell. This is what happens late on a Sunday. I always forget everything that I'm going to say. Um, and Greg's froze. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, yeah. back. <laughs> I totally froze. <laughs> <laughs> you just came up saying your internet's went. I was like, oh, shit. So do you always do your podcast this late on a Sunday? Late. Uh, yeah, because like this is kind of the only time we have free. Um, yeah. We can't really do it during the week, so um, yeah, pretty much. So usually we have a guest. Usually they're Sunday nights so of the freest anyway. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 
Yeah. Not with that. Seems to be, it seems to be like we just did it for a laugh, because eh? I think the first time we done it, it didn't work. We didn't record, they didn't record or something, wasn't it? It didn't record. <laughs> we're like, oh well, it was, it, was, it was good catching up with you, mate. I was like, yeah. <laughs> 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 um, we're both so, saying like that was actually really good. You're like, I didn't press record. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, it was a good trial run. Yeah, it was a good, good day. But no, it's 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 good for us, like, because as you know, like Scottish bodybuilding is it's obviously not the biggest group of people on the planet, so. We're really just trying to obviously push it as much as we possibly can because there's a lot of amazing physiques up here. I mean, we've got we've got IFB pros up here, um, and that. So we kind of really want to just show that you know there is there is hope for the Scottish race Definitely. in terms of bodybuilding. So I'm, ju- I'm um, just gutted Karen's not competing. I haven't spoken to her in a long time, not before COVID. So um, yeah, I don't know what she's doing just now. So I know she had a baby in that. So um, yeah. Yeah, it was it was a shame, but you never know. You never know where the location may take her. But yeah, uh, yeah like I said, I haven't. Spo- I've, I've said hi to at the Scottish, but um, yeah, haven't uh, haven't caught over like properly since yeah. then. So it's been before lockdown. So yeah, it's a shame, but but it's life in it. It's life at the end of the day. Um, we'll get one more question if I can think of one quickly. Um, what was that? I think I'm all questioned out. <laughs> oh, you, you speak almost every day, so it's. Um, you obviously train the same gym as me, but before that, you trained at a gym up north. Do you feel changing over to the new warehouse has been massively beneficial for you? Well, I was actually going to be moving completely down south mm-hmm. uh, because. My, I was training in a gym that was basically all just primal equipment. Yeah. It was shocking. Yeah. Like I was just getting injured constantly. The environment was shit. And, yeah. like, I just felt like I was making no progression. Yeah. So then I spoke to James, and he was like, I'm happy to, to move. So we were actually going to be moving down, like, down south being being close to like a decent a decent gym and then once warehouse got done up i was like i don't actually need to move at all because yeah. this is one of the best gyms in scotland in my opinion yeah so you're still up in fraser or are you in aberdeen no in aberdeen in aberdeen yeah we just moved into our house last week what about amazing uh bridget on that's what i'm fit. is oh. that <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Where are you uh, you know where the Black Dog Pub is? Yes, I'm just like up that road, up the very oh, top right, of that road. Right, well, the, the road parallel to Black Dog Pub, Garden Road, that's where, oh, I, yeah. that's where I'm from. Where the co-op is? Aye, aye. Oh, love it's a small that! World, it's a small <laughs> world, in. Yeah, so. Uh, no, that's good. You're yeah, the first day in Aberdeen, now, obviously, to where you are. Much, know, do you prefer being in Aberdeen much more now? Being certain or being next to the gym, everything. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. I had nothing, nothing there. I felt, yeah, like oh, that's the thing. When I was staying in Fraser, but I, I was driving an hour to get through Aberdeen every day. So it was like a two-hour round trip just to train. And yeah. I was doing that five days a week. Yeah, yeah, even when I was doing it in lockdown, was just absolutely awful. Fucking hated that drive. Yeah. Well, it's just the things that you've just got to do for training. I would have rather trained in a good environment with good equipment than going into yeah. a gym that I hated and chances are getting injured was a lot higher. So Yeah. So you glad I it now the fuel yeah. price. Fuck me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you see the um, like Americans and that they say, Oh yeah, I drove like two hours to train. I was like normal. That's normal that's normal. <laughs> that's a normal time. So. Yeah. A lot of people in England are like that as well. They're like, yeah. oh, I've got a two hour trip. Like, yeah, I know a lot of people like from like the borders and that, they go and train at, they train at uh, Ultraflex every day. Um, I'm like, you're off your tits. Like, <laughs> that amount of uh, driving and the fuel. So I'm so lazy. I bought a flat that's two minutes away from the gym just so I could, <laughs> didn't have to drive or barely walk. So, um, <laughs> priorities. I know, 100%. That's what you need to do. 
I wasn't um, so bad warehouse came about though, because I was actually in the same mindset as you. I was like, I'm never going to get any better training than fucking pure gyms and stuff like that. There's, it's, it just doesn't work. So I was almost in the same mindset as you, so I'm kind of glad the gym did come about. Oh, definitely. Changed a lot yeah. of people. Sure. Yeah, definitely. I don't, know if we, I don't know if we did, Greg, but like, uh, I used to drive through like often to train at Extreme or Planet Bodybuilding mm-hmm. that was around, and I'd drive back yeah. the same day just to train. Yeah. People think you're fucking nuts. I was like, but you'd have no, you just you can't. You'd have the session, it's worth it. I, you can't you can't put money on the value of like being, money on the value? Value, whatever. Being in a, a gym that's like just a great environment, you've got good people around you and that, so. Um, yeah, that's a game changer. I think it's a lot. It's a good takeaway for some a lot of people is that you know a lot of people do get very comfortable, but you know we're, there's not a lot of options in Scotland. But you do have to you know go places that get out of your comfort yeah. zone and train in actual gyms that have decent kit. You know, what I mean, it's it's a big thing. So big way faster. Right. But we're coming up to an hour. See, I'm always on the ball, um, and we know. <laughs> You need to get to bed. So, um, no, we really appreciate you coming on. Uh, like you said, one of Scotland's top pros and, you know, um, our first female guest as well. So, I hope you're honoured. Thank honored. you for having me. Thank <laughs> you for having me. Oh, thank um, you for coming. So, yeah, let's keep chatting. Like I said to everyone um, who we've had on from the Scottish scene, like, we'll hopefully get you back on. And again, uh, we, we spoke about, like, Greg and I spoke about a couple of weeks ago about, like, a Scottish round table. Getting like yeah, a, lot of voice, a lot of voices, a lot of voices on. So, because like I said, we're trying to we're trying to punt like Scottish bodybuilding as much as we can, and obviously we all coach and PT and that as well. So obviously we want to punt that too. But um, aye, it'll be good to kind of hear like a good collection of like Scottish voices going back and forth. So we need to get that sorted at some I point. Definitely and, need the subtitles for that one. Yeah, hundred percent. Do a full one in Broca for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, cool so yeah thanks again and uh, yeah guys if you made it this far um, we appreciate that so do all the social media stuff um, liking subscribing commenting all that shite and uh, I'll get this uploaded for Monday so cheers again guys thank you thank you